At 11.40 p.m. on the night of Sunday, April 14, 1912, the British White Star Liner, RMS Titanic, struck an iceberg and sank in the North Atlantic, 1,600 miles northeast of New York City. The giant ship at that time was the largest in the world and was 882 feet long and weighed over 46,000 tons. The ship was on its maiden voyage from Southampton, England to New York City. Titanic crewmen sighted the iceberg shortly before the crash, but too late to avoid a collision. Experts had considered the ship unsinkable and hailed its durability and engineering design. The collision tore a 300-foot gash in the Titanic's hull. The ship's lifeboats had room for less than half of the 2,208 passengers and crew. The nearest ship to the Titanic, the Californian, lay only a few miles away, but due to the wireless telegraphy operator going to sleep early that evening, the distress signal from the Titanic was not received. The Californian had the capacity to save all passengers and crew on the Titanic. The liner Carpathia, bound for the Mediterranean out of New York Harbor, was four hours away at the time of the collision. The Carpathia received distress signals from the Titanic and moved at 17 knots per hour toward the Titanic, which sank in two and a half hours. The Carpathia arrived on the scene and picked up 705 survivors. 1,503 passengers and crew, including Captain E.F. Smith, went down with the ship. Mrs. John Pillsbury Snyder of Wyzetta, Minnesota, was one of the survivors. She was on her honeymoon in Europe at the time, and along with a number of other newlyweds, was a passenger on the Titanic. The following account of the tragedy was given by Mrs. Snyder on October 14, 1980. And we thought, well, let's go up and see if we got the tickets. Maybe they've forgotten us all this time. We stayed so long around the whole place. And they said, oh, they were so glad to see us. They said, we've got a surprise for you. We're not going to give you a ticket. We asked if they had our tickets ready. He said, we've got your tickets ready, all right. And, and you'll be so glad you won't know what you're doing. We're going to put you on the Titanic. And we didn't look. We looked at each other. What's the Titanic? And they said, oh, it's a wonderful, it's, it's, it's true, it's the first time it's ever been out, but then it's the most wonderful ship that ever happened. So they talked us into changing our tickets and going on that. And I fussed a little bit about it because I didn't like the, the captain that was on the other boat. That's where we got off. We hadn't made the rounds yet, but we had got off and and uh, went to dry land and took an automobile and had some fun. So uh, we just, uh, I said, well, who's the captain? And they said, we don't know. And I said, why don't you know? And they said, we never allowed a new captain until you're at sea. It's always a surprise who the captain is. And he said, oh, but he's one of the most wonderful captains. So we don't know either. I said, but you'll find it on your plate when you come in to dinner. So we waited about three or four days till the boat was really ready. And then we went in. We went in and over. They told us, they took us. And, oh, that was a beautiful boat. They put us up way up in the upper part, and all the brides and grooms were there. And it, it was really quite thrilling and nice. And. Uh, we were very pleased, but then we waited till we went down for dinner. We said, well, we aren't sure we're going to stay here anyway. <laughs> if there's a captain here that we know, we're going to get off. And they said, you can. We can go back with the mail. So then we calmed down. And lo and behold, we went up down to the dinner and turned over our plate. It was Captain Smith. We nearly dropped dead. We'd gone upstairs because it was so cold. They didn't have any heater downstairs. The place wasn't ready, ready the boat really wasn't ready to go. So uh, the, uh, everybody that was downstairs went up to their rooms and then they gave it, sent lanterns in with us, or electric things or something, whatever it was, to, and uh, we heated our rooms. So we just sat there and, and there were, we were the brides and grooms and they'd go to each other's rooms and chatter for a while, then come back. But uh, we just so cold that we just decided we'd go to bed anyway. 
So we did. He was over the other end, and I was right in the place where he hit. <laughs> but I didn't know it. So I didn't know I was really on the outside. I didn't think they'd be there to hit me anyway. <laughs> well, anyway, we were uh, so cold that we just stayed up there, and all the brides and grooms did. And finally, we decided to go to bed and forget it. And we turned out our little lantern, and, and uh, then the first thing we knew, this awful wham bang. And we got out of bed so quick, you never saw anything like it, and everybody was, had their heads out the doors then. And they, then the sailors come around. They said, "Never mind. We just hit a, a, a uh, what do you call it? What did we hit? Icicle. Iceberg. Did, iceberg. <laughs> and uh, they said, uh, just, just harmless. Just don't worry. Everything will be all right." And we said, "Well, we want to go down and see. We want to get up and see it. Wherever it is, we want to see it." And don't you know when you're that young, know, you want to see it away, whether you were cold or hot or what. So we put on our clothes and away we went up there and were we afraid then? It was so cold and the place was so awful and the boat was already tipping and the iceberg was you know, just shattered in front of us. I think the picture in there showed it. The front was down and uh, so we thought, well, let's get out of the, they say, oh, it's going to be fixed, it's going to be all right, don't worry. And the uh, captain would come around and, and tell us, but he said, I think we'll call for the boats, and you people go up there and get in the boats and try to pacify us. We went down in the basement, and there they were up to their knees shoveling, trying to get the water out. The poor sailors, they were just, well, they said, they said this is the biggest hole here, this no use of doing this, might as well let it in now. <laughs> well, anyway, we went up. That's how we looked all through the place and saw how bad it was. And then we went up there. And we stayed until they finally decided that, uh, that we'd go. And it was about let, an hour I mean, he let us a, stay. About an hour then. Mm -hmm. yeah. Trying to make us get in the boat. And then they didn't know how to lower them. First, they'd go down. One to go. We said, well, we'd go when the men said they could go, because you had to have men to row. So they came to us finally. Well, we didn't want to do it if it, men weren't allowed. We thought, well, no, we'd rather stay together down there. But they begged and pleaded with us, because they said, if you lower one boat, they'll all get in the others, and they'll know better. So we just set an example, we did. Wasn't that fortunate? So we rolled down, but I tell you, it was hard on our husbands. But uh, we got down. Of course, it was nothing but ice. We could hardly move, and cold. And I just had that little dress, that coat on that I have there. We weren't dressed for winter. And uh, we bailed with the men's hats. <laughs> so that's we'd stay there until we nearly froze to death too. And they they lower us too. We get down and tipped, and then we'd yell and scream. We get down, and then nobody knew where the thing was, and they couldn't. So we took everything. Finally, they, we found it. We women just we were wet up to here anyway, so we just held our hands all around and tried to catch that thing that we put in the to block out the ocean. We found it too. Then we started moving away. And the poor, we got finally, a, when the, we were rolling away, and they'd keep saying, don't come back, don't come back, stay around, we'll, we'll have a pilot man in a boat show you where to keep yourself. So we did, we did what they did, and we, the men were rowing. Oh, it was you know, we can imagine the ocean, and then the icicles. They, they, I mean, the ice. It was just like going through. I don't know what, just a chopped ice up to your neck. So, but they struggled and struggled and struggled, and we finally uh, made it. The women and children. They said, "Get in." Down we went. 
We set the example for Then they didn't, then they wouldn't come. I think we'll never see. That was advertised, I think, weeks and months before it was even in. But, uh, oh, it took us a long time to get away from there. We couldn't get out of the ice. So it was difficult to get through the ice. Away yes, the and, and it, then it was country. all, it was just as if the halfway up to, because it was up to our knees anyway, in the boat and the water. And it was just as if we'd just taken this and piled a whole lot of chopped ice in it. That's where we were sitting all the time. <laughs> so we, we, we did as much with the men's hats. We used the men's hats to mm -hmm. bail the boat. Tried to bail. Then, uh, when you were when you were moving away from the Titanic, were, the, were there lights on the Titanic? Could you you could still see it, I suppose. Uh, yeah, and it, it, you could see it partially up. You've seen some of the pictures. Yeah. Then then when it was really tipped up, the orchestra was right up there. The orchestra kept going up and up and up. And they were right up there, and they were playing him near my God to thee all the time. And we knew it. We thought, well. They don't need to give themselves up for us because <laughs> we know we'll be the first ones in there. But uh, pretty slowly, when it was ours, when I looked around and I said, I see a light over there. And they said, oh, no, you don't. I said, I do. And they said, that's a star. I said, I don't believe it. I've been watching it a long time before I mentioned it. So two or three people, we got the men looking too. Sure enough. That's what the Carpathia was. And uh, so we started rowing for that then. Well, that was, of course, three hours, three or four hours after the other sank, because we were rowing all the time. Did you pull right up alongside of it then? And then they. Mm -hmm. they uh... It took us quite a while. We were a long time doing it. The men were rowing. I was afraid they'd all have a heart attack. Just think how long they'd been in that icy water sitting in water up to their knees. And the men, of course, they were, they were warm enough, they said, because they were working so hard. And there was one man, he was a great big fellow, and he had, a, he had his coat on and he had his hat on. He was sitting in the back of the boat and just watching what they do, and he'd yell at them once in a while. And we finally asked him to, not to yell at them. They were trying to do all right. and. Uh, he was some German, and uh, I think we were against the Germans at that time, weren't we? Yeah. <laughs> so we, we said, oh, goodness gracious, don't get him mad, because he'd probably shoot us all. <laughs> and he did aim his uh, revolver at us all the time, scared us to death. But uh, he calmed down when we really saw the boat. When we saw the light, it was a long way off, and they told me I was crazy. I couldn't see it over that far. I said, you just look, and they, people watch, and they find all, we were all agreeable that it was, so we aimed for it. But then when we got there, well, of course, the, the, the Carpathia, they just lowered a big basket. They let their boats down and came and got us, kind of, and said, to, they have help now, and be, don't, we don't worry anymore, and so on and so forth, and so they put down a basket, and uh, they threw me in that basket. I was so much smaller than some of these other people with all their fur coats on, and, they, and uh, I was about as big as a minute. Uh, I said, well, don't put anybody on top of me. <laughs> I had that once before when I got in. So they took us on, and all the people, of course, on board were all up and dressed and everything, because they took them a long time to row to us. That's how far we could see them. And they were firing at us, too. So we all sat there, the brides and grooms. Sat on we the, sat there uh, right on the floor. And they were, well, everybody that would get downstairs to get some breakfast went. They finally brought us up some. We told them not to. We wouldn't eat. We weren't hungry anyway, we said. So just let us stay here. And we don't want anything. We were afraid somebody would take our place. <laughs> and they were, then where we would be, we'd be scattered, you know. But here we were, right square in the middle, just as if that was a downstairs way there. And then the other rooms were the people's rooms. The other <laughs> we never moved. Finally, one of the brides said, uh, 
I don't know what I'm sitting here and crying all the time for. Should I have my fortune told in Cairo? And they said I was going to uh, be in a shipwreck. Then I was going to be in a, a, a automobile accident. And I was finally going to be killed on a bicycle. And so we laughed and we said, well, why didn't you tell us this before? We've got to get to dry land now. So then we started eating and we did everything to get there so we could get to dry land. And lo and behold, every one of those things happened to her. Can you believe it? A fortune teller in Cairo? See, so we sat there like we were, not moving, for pretty two days, I think. A lot of people wanted to go on their cruise. And then a lot of people said they wouldn't think of going. I felt so sorry for all of us. Lose so many of them lost their husbands, you know, and their children. A lot of children that were running around. But the people took them into their rooms with them and tried to play with the children. And the children didn't know what it was all about anyway. But the uh, women that were saved, it was very sad. It was awful. So there we did, sat for two days, for near a day and a half, deciding what to do. The captain didn't know what to do. He, he said, they hired this boat to take a cruise. But he said, I think we should go to New York. And, um, but it's up to them. I've got to do what they say. Finally, they all decided to go. Uh, we all said, well, if you, go, if you go back to New York, you better tell a telephone ahead or something and tell them we're going to be there for life. We wouldn't get into another boat for anything. And so they got to laughing about that. Um.